Hi, this is uh, Bob Parker uh, with uh, Uncensored and, uh, and Live, and it's a very special uh, day uh, and presentation I'm going to make with a, a guest, our first guest on this segment of The Wine Advocate. And uh, I, I'm with a, a guy named uh, Greg Lambrick, who has a company called Corvan, but he's, got, he's going to talk about himself and uh, what, what his history is and what he's developed. But in my 35 years, I think the only wine, non-wine product that I've ever written an article about extensively was the Riedel glasses when they first came out and you know and I thought people should check them out. Uh, what he has invented, as he is, I guess you would say, you're, you're many things but you're also an inventor, uh, and he's going to tell how, how he came about this. He has invented a transformational device for the preservation of wine. Uh, we met several months ago and uh, we went through this demonstration of basically this little device that you're going to see a little bit closer up. Uh, which is called you call it Corvan, right? That's right. Uh, and uh, it is—it's uh, got an argon gas uh, canister on it, and it basically goes right through the capsule, cork into the bottle, and then you can pour out what you want, and then it's displaced with uh, with argon gas. And I could not believe the results of this. He brought bottles, and we have four of them here. We have and and some really, you know, very fragile wines. The Meow. 2003 White Hermitage from Chapoutier, uh, which which was first opened in 2008, and it's you know the fill is right up here. This wine t when we poured a glass two months ago, and we're going to pour one here in this demonstration. Uh, it was just like opening a fresh bottle, and this is a very oxidative, very fragile vintage. And the same thing we have Phelps here that was 2008, and then we have two two wines 2007, both 2003 Chateau Neuf du Pape, and I, as as as, what, as the people who are watching this know, so that, that's a very fragile vintage with many, many disappointing wines, but these are two of the best. And this wine I drink with my wife all the time, and this wine was first opened in 2007. It's down, the fill, it's down here, this is how much has been consumed over the, over the last six years. And it was just as fresh when we used his device as it was pulling a cork out. And I've drunk this wine so many times and not finished the bottle with my wife with a meal and the next morning just being with the cork stuck back in it's oxidized so it's absolutely a transformational device that I can't tell you how how impressed I am with its, the technology and how well it works it's on trial at a, at a couple of top restaurants and so we're introducing that today I don't want to be the subject the centerpiece here is the subject so I'm going to introduce Greg Lambrecht he's going to talk about his device and then we'll go back to the wines. So Greg, here he is. Uh, he's from Boston. He's an MIT guy, right? That's right. I went to MIT. I'll hold it against him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody at Harvard. Um, yeah, I'm an inventor, uh, normally of medical devices. Uh, went to MIT a couple of times, worked at Pfizer, uh, worked at um, an orthopedic implant manufacturer, Helmetica, then Stryker, both great companies. Um, and then started my own medical device companies. Uh, I work now on spine and spinal implants. Uh, for people with ruptured disc herniations or with disc herniations. Um, but along the way, uh, I developed a love and a fascination uh, for wine. Uh, started uh, in my childhood in California. Uh, I was raised in uh, Newport Beach uh, and fell in love with California wines at that time. Um, I've lived overseas a couple of times and loved wine there. Uh, actually all influenced by, uh, by Robert Parker. Um, and what I drank throughout my youth uh, largely came from what he was suggesting. So it's, uh, it's shocking for me to uh, have him compliment my device so, so strongly, but fantastic. Uh, so anyway, um, my wife became pregnant with my second child. And I had uh, probably about three cases of wine at the time. Uh, she stopped drinking. Uh, and then I had all these different bottles of wine. Uh, I wanted a glass, but I didn't want to open up the bottle and then have a great bottle of wine that I would drink the next day and know it wasn't going to be as good as when I first pulled the cork. Um, so I was working on a product uh, for uh, accessing the vascular system uh, beneath the skin that used needles that went through the skin and into a device that was implanted repeatedly uh, and couldn't damage that thing that was underneath. So I developed some needles that could go through materials without damaging the materials. And I thought, hey, wait a minute, I've got this needle, I've got a cork. Um, there's got to be a way that I can use this to get wine out without ever removing uh, the cork. The cork is really um, the best wine preservation device. Uh, mm. It has for hundreds of years, 500 years, uh, held wine in the bottle um, and kept it uh, free from oxidation or minimized oxidation um, over, the, over the long history of wine. Uh, and I think that what I realized was if we could just leave the cork in place, 
get through it to get access to the wine that we want and then get uh, then remove so that the, the cork can then close. Uh, we had the optimum opportunity to drink what we wanted independent of the wine that was sold to us. So uh, it's totally changed the way that I drink wine. Now, this is what my cellar looks like. Uh, I have uh, piles and piles of bottles that are missing half of the wine. Um, missing one glass, two glasses, three glasses, I get down to the bottom and I'll pull the cork uh, to drink that last glass. But it's, it's allowed me to have a great glass of wine every night that I come home. And if I want another glass, I have it from another bottle. My wife wants white, she started drinking again, thank goodness. Uh, I can pour her a glass of white wine and I can have a glass of red. Uh, when people come over to my house, I invite them into my cellar. I've got a vertical of Costa Estenal. Uh, and I'll allow them to try 12 different years, um, and then I still have the bottle, so I can show the same thing to the next person. So it's totally changed the way that I interact with wine. Um, and it's, uh, it, it sort of started in 2003, uh, when I made my first functioning prototype. Um, I've evolved it over the, the last decade, uh, trying to optimize the needle size, the gas that I used, the pressures that we used, uh, to get to the point where even professionals couldn't tell the difference between a wine that was accessed and one that was, was not. So that's the story of the device. Uh, want me to use it? Yeah, let's, let's, let's do a demonstration. Sure. Here. Well, we've got two wines that we pulled up. One is the, uh, the Mount Eden uh, Vineyards Santa Cruz uh, Mountain 2007 Chardonnay. Uh, and as you can see, capsules on it, corks intact. Because this is the beauty of this, is that you can go right through the capsule, the cork, and then pour as much out as you want. And then the other one is a Chateau Neuf. 2003 again, using one of these fragile vintages, like Comme des Fous, which is a small vineyard, uh, and this is Clos Saint-Jean. So, uh, we can start. All right, awesome. Uh, so and this is just showing how you do it. Sure. And then we'll go to the ones that have been open for a long time. All right, I'll grab this glass. So, uh, basically, you want to get a needle through the cork and then inject gas. Uh, first thing is, you put the device uh, on the bottle, like so. Uh, that just stabilizes it. I check to see that I've got some gas. This is the button that pushes the gas out. Push the needle through the cork like that. The wine comes out of here. I still need to tip the bottle. I inject gas, and the wine comes out. I have to pump it a couple of times because the gas is displacing uh, the wine in the bottle, and as there's more and more space, more and more gas can go in, and more wine can flow out. So I pour as much as you want, and then when you're done, uh, what you do is you tip the bottle back up, that vents the extra gas uh, that's in the bottle. So now what's in here is the argon gas that we've injected and the remaining wine. I then pull it out, take it off, and you're done. And show it doesn't leak either, I mean, which is amazing because of the, the, the high-tech needle that you're using, which is a hollow needle, right? It is. It's a hollow, a hollow non-coring uh, medical grade uh, needle. Uh, that I developed over the last 10 years to try to maximize the flow rate while minimizing the damage to the cork. Cork is a viscoelastic material, very much like a, other biologic materials like our skin, and it can move out of the way, and then under compression, it'll come back and close. Good. So that's it. Why don't we do the Mount Eden, just to sure. show in a second way of doing it. It's so simple. I mean, it's an amazingly easy thing to do. So, uh, second glass. This is just like uh, my wife and I at home. Uh, place it on top of the bottle like so. Push it through, tip it sideways, inject. I like to pour along the side of the bottle or the glass because uh, it eliminates splash and it eliminates bubbles in the bottom of the glass. That's just from a uh, from wine interacting with air as it goes down. Like so. Good. You had a good view of that? And that's our director of. Uh, <laughs> programming. <laughs> right. It's uh, uncensored and uh, that's awesome. raw. Yeah, no. It's but okay, that's easy enough. But what is impressive is what we're gonna turn to now are how how well these wines are preserved.